Hello, welcome to What the Flick. Welcome to January, which is traditionally a horrible, horrible time to do our job. It's usually it's good every every <laughs> other month, right? But January is January is rough because sure. the movies are typically really bad. It's dumping ground time. It's so right. nothing, They're yeah. sweeping out the warehouse. Right. So nothing good's coming out this, this week, so we're going to take a look back real fast. We never did a best of from 2011. Well, no. I'm Christy, by the way, and this is Matt. This is Alonzo. We're sitting. Are you guys happy now? All right, so um, we're going to talk about the best movies of the year so far. Alonzo, what's your pick for the best of 2011? Uh, my favorite movie this year was a British indie film called Weekend uh, that uh, was a big award winner at South by Southwest and uh, made its way through the festival circuit. And you can now see it on Netflix Instant if you missed it. It's about uh, two guys who pick each other up at a bar and wind up spending the weekend together and getting to know each other. But uh, it gets complicated because one of them is about to uh, leave the UK to go live in America for a year. What kind of stuff is it that you want me to sign? Just talk about last night, you know, what happened, what you wanted to happen. It's for an art project. Yeah. And people can listen to it. If you make the grade, yeah. I saw you in the club and I thought you were out of my league or whatever. And um, yeah, we came back here, didn't we? And then you kissed me, you said you took my shirt off. I just thought that we were having a really nice time it was lovely. It was more than enough for me. So, um, sorry, Glenn, if I don't make you great. Have you got a boyfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't do boyfriends. Um... You know what it's like when you first sleep with someone you don't know? You like the blank canvas, and it gives you an opportunity to project onto that canvas who you want to be. Why can't you just understand that some people just want to be happy? Are you happy? I am absolutely fine. I'm sure you are. Don't presume that you understand me. I mean, you think just because I want a relationship yeah. that you know me. No, I don't. I can, I can see it in your eyes, Glenn, that you want one too. I'm going away tomorrow. How long are you going for? Uh, about two years, I think. What's going on? This guy I met, I met him two days ago. He doesn't know me, I don't know him. <sighs> two days, there's nothing. And then he's gone away. You have to see him when he gets back, will you? He's not coming back. You look like you want to kiss me. I do. Go on, then. This is a really smart movie. I mean, I've been watching gay films for as long as there have been gay films, pretty much. And the first time I saw it, I thought, wow, this is such a great gay movie. And then when I saw it again, I was like, no, this is a great movie, period, full stop. Um, it's so well acted and so well written and directed by Andrew Haig. This is his second feature film. Um, and it's just one of the smartest films about relationships and people getting to know each other and, and all the stuff that, that movies used to know how to do better than they seem to be doing it lately. Um, and there's this great sense of melancholy in Weekend that you also find in a film like Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, where they're so great together, but you know they cannot be together, and that's so right, heart too good sad. Right, right, and it's not even like the sort of tragic Brokeback Mountain thing where like society won't allow. No, right. they just their lives are going right. in different directions, and they met each other at exactly the wrong time, but they it was still the right thing for them to at least have this this flash of time together. So I, I just I, I love it, and I've been pushing it on everybody. Uh, it's on Netflix Instant. Check it out. Yes. What is your best of the year? My Imagine best it. of the year. My favorite movie this year. The I was most surprised by stars Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, and Nick Nolte in a role that I think should get him an Academy Award this year, although he'll lose to Christopher Plummer. Probably. Um, Warrior, mm -hmm. uh, which is the story of two brothers who are mixed martial arts fighters. Uh, they're both kind of in it for the money. They get this shot basically at the at to you know, win this tournament and get a bunch of money. One's doing it to save his house. One's doing it just because he thinks he can. Um, you know, one of them's really, they both have really estranged relationship with their father, played by Nick Nolte, who's a recovering alcoholic. Um, it's absolutely a lifetime movie for guys, <laughs> but I loved it and it got me choked up. I want to know the toughest man on the planet is. That's what we're going to find out. It's me, Pop. What are you doing here? Tommy's back. Did he say if he wants to see me? I'm proud of you, Tommy. What you did for that kid, the tank. What was I supposed to do, let him drop? Tommy Reardon, you saved my life. Look, Brendan, the bank has got to go by the new appraisal figures. You're upside down on your mortgage. How much do you need? I didn't come in for long, Frank. I was hoping that you would train me. Are you serious? Do it! I thought we agreed that we weren't going to raise our children in a family. Brendan, you're a teacher. You got no business in the ring with those animals. Actually, I used to be one of those animals. I guess I forgot to put 
put that down on my application. There's this big tournament. Top 16 middleweights in the world. And when it takes all, I'm gonna need a trainer. Not that much you were good at. Frank, I need this. I got a family to protect. Everything I do is for them. What's going on up here? Daddy is now a princess. Mom needed you. I needed you. You're my big brother. You bailed on me. I was a 16-year-old kid. What the hell did I know? You had a choice, okay? You had a choice. War hero Tommy Reardon, who has become an overnight sensation, and Brandon Conlon, the physics teacher, they pulled off a miracle. You can do this. One of you say it. I can do this. here to win this fight because if we're not i will throw in the towel this movie really just hit me it hit me really hard i think part of it is there's a scene in the movie where you know they kind of telegraph this that nick nolte is going to ha- obviously have a problem with his sobriety and when he has his breakdown i was just riveted it's devastating I, it's, it's, no, it's a devastating big, it's a big it's, scene it's amazing and i got really choked up at that and then at the end of the movie you know, when the, when the two brothers are fighting, and I'm not really spoiling it, because right. you know you it's know gonna go, yeah. to like, right, right, right. you don't yeah. cast, you know, you don't make a movie about two brothers if they're not gonna go head to head in the final fight. So, if you think that's a spoiler, then you've never seen a movie before. <laughs> and I, I gotta say, that's that's where the, this movie lost me, but I, I, there's so much in it that I, I really like, especially Nolte's performance, as you point out. Um, I, I think it is a really, it's a movie, it is, it is a chick flick for guys, right. and it's a movie about emotions and about uh, you know, family tension, all wrapped up in this sort of mixed martial art package. Um, and I think that might be why audiences didn't quite cotton to it, because they didn't know exactly. I think it's right. a- It's not an action movie. No, but they could have sold it as a guys kick the crap out of each other movie that your girlfriend will also like because it's about you know, family. family and love and emotion and stuff. Yeah, you know, I, you know without, uh, this will, probably overinflated. It's it kind of makes me think of Rocky in a way in that Rocky is not about the fighting. Mm-hmm. Rocky is about the journey of the character. And in this case you've got two characters. I don't think it has quite the emotional impact that Rocky does, but I feel like it's a really strong movie and I really like yeah, I was really moved by it. And Tom Hardy is totally great in this and he's great in everything. Yeah. And yes, yeah. he bulked up so there's the physical transformation, but also he's doing this like deeply tormented kind of young Brando yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Where That's it's all from the inside out. Yeah. And he can do everything. If you look at him in this, and you look at him in Inception, and then also this past year in Tinker, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Taylor, Spy. Sure, yeah. I mean, he can do pretty much every kind of role. He is sexy, and, 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 and he great. bulked up for Bronson, which is another yes. movie where he beats up a lot of people. But the character is completely different. So yeah, he's right. he can do it all. And for those people with cable, Tom Hardy is the reason that they're showing Star Trek Nemesis these days. <laughs> he's the villain in that, uh, as the young clone of yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Christy, what was your favorite well, film of 2011? Um, I picked uh, Martha. Marcy May, Marlene, this uh, weird, dark, haunting little movie starring Elizabeth Olsen as a young woman who flees a cult in upstate New York and tries to assimilate to normal life again with her sister and her husband, and the paranoia of the past and the present sort of collide and, and converge, and you don't really know what's real and what's not, and it's pretty great. Take a look. Martha? Yeah? Where are you? Um, I'm not sure. I'm... Upstate, I think. Find out where you are and I will come get you. I can't wait that long. What's going on? She's here now. She seems okay. What'd she say? She had some boyfriend. They were living in the Catskills. Is this Martha? Martha. You look like a Marcy Bay. You've got a really nice place here. It's as much yours as it is mine. Where are we? Connecticut. Well, how far are we? From what? Yesterday. You mean from where I picked you up? About three hours, why? Do you ever have that feeling where you can't tell if something's a memory or if it's something you dreamed? I don't blame you for not trusting people. If you're ever going to have a meaningful relationship, you need to let your guard down. We want to help you. Let us in. What happened to you? You're a teacher and a leader, Marcy. Now prove it. Shoot it. They're living animals. So shoot Max then. Go ahead. 
I know who I am. I am a teacher and a leader. You just never let me be that. I don't think she should stay with us anymore. We can't ignore the fact that her behavior is insane. I'm her only fan. We have to leave. We all have to leave. What happened? I don't know. My favorite. I won't lose you. She's That's the all. younger sister of Mary Kate and Ashley. Yes. But she's so amazing in this. I think this is a star making performance for her. We will not have to think of her in terms of her sisters no, no, anymore no, 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 no. after this. I, yeah, I think the two big breakthrough performances by actresses this year were, were Elizabeth Olsen here and uh, Ada Perro Oduye in, um, Pariah. in Pariah. She's great, yes. They're both extraordinary. But yeah, this Martha Marcy May Marlene has that. Polanski feeling of you know a movie like Rosemary's Baby or Knife in the Water where they just ratchet up the tension. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. Is this person just paranoid or are they really coming to get her? Uh, people complained about the ending being vague. I, I thought it was the perfect. Ending. The ending is perfect, and yes. it's it, it it totally puts a cap on everything this movie is doing right. I think. Right. I love the ending. I love the the confidence of that kind of ambiguity. And this is Sean Durkin's first film. He wrote it and directed it. Right. And uh, you know, everyone is great, in it, and he edits it really seamlessly. Where a moment's happening, or it, it's in the present, she's jumping into a lake in the present, but then it seamlessly cuts to her doing something very similar with a memory of her time sure. in, in the cult and. Uh, it's really good. It's a tough little feat to pull off, and I kind of loved it. Am I am I right in thinking that this movie had no score, or is it just sort of very subtle? It's a lot of atmospheric, just kind of noise. Yeah, I think. Right? Of, I don't think of it as having any kind of music under it, which was sort of part of the, right. the tension. tension. Maybe yeah. like it's a hum, like an mm -hmm. almost imperceptible kind of hum that permeates the whole thing. But yeah, that is a good call. So anyway, so January is here. Hopefully, it'll be over in a matter of days, <laughs> and we'll have actual movies. I think. Oh, we'll have actual movies for <laughs> you. It's uh, a good month to burn through your Netflix <laughs> there you go. All right.